Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Whilst we're walking through the house, we're here today to talk about the solar panels that we have on the roof of this project that I've built. Let's go. And we're on the roof where I'm not quite sure how windy it is, so I do apologize if there is a bit of wind. I am currently hanging you um, actually on the roof to protect you from the wind a bit as it comes from uh, that direction. Anyway, we are on the roof. And like the video intro said, I wanted to talk to you today about the solar panels on this house. Now, when I designed this house four years ago, it was the idea of producing an energy efficient home. Um, massively insulated, lower energy costs to maintain, all things like that. And I've just realised there is, looks like potentially a loose-ish tile, which I need to go fix. Anyway, yeah, so sorry about that. And low energy cost. Um, I did predict back in the day that energy prices, it goes without saying, will go up and up and up and up and up. Didn't predict the Ukraine war, obviously, or anything like that, and the energy crisis, but I thought I needed to move off a more problematic setup being gas and electric, and I decided to go all electric. And that has gone through very well in terms of removing the gas was a piece of piss. I've also then installed an air source heat pump for people who don't follow the channel. And we also then decided, well, I decided it and how I designed it was to put as much solar panels as I could on this roof without affecting the design of the actual building. The reason is we live in a very protective area. So we had conservation rules on what we can and can't do. So I couldn't rack up and have just them like a single plane on one part of a gable or anything like that it's got to be perfect symmetrical they wanted it in the actual roof not put them on a rack format and things like that so that all went well apologies for that someone just phoned me um then the next stage was how many could we get up here and how many do i want to do and it was pretty much it doesn't really matter if it was going to be north facing south facing east or west facing we were going to put as many panels as we could that they allowed us at the council and the development so i'm going to talk you through how many i've got i'm going to show you how many i've got and i'm also going to show you what i've got to clean as well so let's get to it so even though i have been living here for several months and things these panels for people who watch the channel have been in place for over two years when we slated the roof and stuff and these are north facing and as you can see they need a natural clean and what's very interesting which i'm probably going to do a video of is that one there which i have cleaned this panel i have cleaned that's better sorry this panel i've cleaned semi cleaned that one and the furthest two over there i haven't cleaned and on the production side of stuff this panel here which is the most clean is actually doing better now why is it green it's green purely because it doesn't get enough sun in the winter months and it just creates this like gangrene type of thing so you just need to wash it down and stuff like that so that's the first task that i need to do on, an, on another video but yeah anyway this is north facing south facing is pretty much in that direction i would say there so not pure what this gable and roof is facing in that direction i would say it's in that pretty much direction but this is north facing and north facing wise, we've got these four here. And then as you see there in the valley, we've got an additional two. Now, quickly just want to say, during the winter months, it's pretty poor, not gonna lie. The reason is the sun doesn't get high enough and things. In the summer months, with the sun coming up in around about this direction here, it gets a lot of the morning. And on the evenings, it finishes over there. So it's actually, again, getting it. So I will put a little snapshot of what I've done on a midweek session and things, and it, you can get an idea. It's actually pretty good, to be fair. But on the other side of these four, facing those two that you see there, I've got another additional two, which are south-facing. And then on the other side of those two there, facing, again, south-facing, I've got another two. Then I've got four on the back, facing the back. They just purely get morning sun and stuff all year round which is pretty good and then we move over to the additional 16 at the front now these are some big hitters and these also need a bit of a clean i will say but these are some big hitters these panels here they um they do very 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 well throughout um the the winter and the summer to be honest with, you, with it being slightly west facing and stuff uh, they get a good burn rate at the end of the day as well, which is fantastic. So that at that point is 30 at that stage. And then when we did the garage, which when we collect, collapsed the barn and things, we then installed 
these two, let me just drop down. These two on the back. One. And what is particularly interesting about these two, whilst I'm coming back up here to hide you from the wind, is they get no sun at all, obviously in the winter. They're worse than the north facing, actually, to be honest with you, um, in terms of generation, I think. No, they're not. Yes, they are, actually. Yes, they are. And those ones only come online, I would say, around about March the 15th. Anyway, the angle that they are at compared to the south-facing ones that are all the time at the back of the house, they're, they're fantastic, those ones down there. They're absolutely generating loads and loads and loads and loads. And the, the one that's on the furthest way to the garden, the back of the house, is by far the best performing panel on a day in terms of sunlight, cloudy or pure sunlight. It just, the angle that it's at, it just obviously kicks the crap out of everything else. I'm just gonna go downstairs now. Oh, I can hide down here actually. Oh, I'm right out the wind, perfect. So that takes us with these two to 32 panels completely in our setup. Um, that is managed by a five kilowatt inverter, no, six kilowatt inverter, do apologize. Um, solar edge inverter, I'm generating on a good day around about 64 kilowatts at the moment in the heights of june in the longest day and everything like that it's 60 63 4, 5 or something is my best averaging on a normal cloudy semi-day like this around about 45 and on a normal sunny with a bit of cast over cloud i'm doing around about 50 55 to 60 and things so generating quite a lot of electricity on the all all day round on, on these panel on this six kilowatt system. Now, I do max out my inverter. Now, people who don't quite know how the inverters work in terms of their capabilities, they have the ability to go to twice as much before they kick into any problems. I'm generating at the proper, proper peak at like 12 o'clock where I've got the most cell facing and it's got the fronts as well starting to kick in as well as the back is still in play a little bit and stuff like that. I'm generating around about 6.2, 6.3 kilowatts. So I'm losing out on 300 watts of solar energy. But it's very rare that I do, to be honest with you, go over the six kilowatts. It's always in between 5.8 and 6, 6.05 kilowatts. So I'm getting a good amount of electricity at the moment, but it's not enough. And we have big plans actually to increase this and it's all to do with the garden. And that will be coming on at another video and we'll talk about it another time. You may be asking, why do I need that? The reason behind it all, like I said at the start of the video, I'm wanting to be efficient, which is I don't want any bills for the electricity side of them. I have a heat pump, which is electricity only, which does the hot water as well as the heating. So in the summer, it's absolutely fine. But the idea, well, the summer it's fine in terms of I don't need any heating. In the winter months, I'm not generating enough to compensate that usage of it. Um, in the winter, when we were running it um, in terms of a, I ran it overnight, which resembles basically what it would be running during the day. And I calculate how much electricity we're using now whilst living in it in terms of cooking, lighting, a bit of phone charging and stuff. I will need around about 40 to 45 kilowatts to run this five bedroom house. So that's full heating, showering, lighting and all stuff like that. 40 to 45 kilowatts. And I'm not generating that in at the moment. These have been online, these solar panels, uh, since the start of the year, around about November time. So I've got a good idea how much electricity I can generate in that period of the winter months, but it's nowhere near enough. Now, I have got Tesla battery storage, different video and everything like that, but I want to earn enough money certainly in the summer to pay for the winter which i'm not quite sure i can do certainly in this year where we haven't had a very good um sun yield we'll call it pretty good word that i think so I mean, now doesn't mean as much good weather at the moment um i don't think i'm generating enough to pay for my um winter and with the daily connection charge now it's 65p you know and i'm only selling at 15p a kilowatt and I'm having to sell four kilowatts just to basically break the um, service charge, etc. Before I even start generating anything for the for the piggy bank. 
So I need to generate some more electricity. So that'll be generating in terms of the winter months to, to compensate what I need for the heat pump, but come the summer, ramp up that up to the max. Now, where it's gonna go in the garden will be south facing. There is a tree that might be coming down, might not be, which depends if it does, that will be massively different for us. But if it doesn't, I'm not particularly bothered because I'll just move the panels further this way. If I full rack it up, I'm talking about south facing-ish. Again, it's not perfect south facing, but it's at the same angle of the house, basically. I'll be potentially getting another 10 to 12 panels on there. So quite a lot, basically. And yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it so far. And this is the heat pump that we've got. And I'll be doing a separate video on this, this Eco Down, Mitsubishi Eco Down. Sorry, the dog's here to say hello. Um, and it's perfect. I really, really like it. And at the moment, it's currently heating the hot water. It's currently heating a 320, I think, uh, litre water tank. Um, it costs to heat that around about 25p and things. It matters, it, no, it's cheaper than that, sorry. It's, it's 25p when it's in the winter. I think it's around about 11p at the moment. Get rid of that. Thanks, Rosie. And um, so the warmer the air is, the easier it is, obviously, to, to, to get all the uh, heat out of it and things like that to put into the to system. So when it's the sun months like that, heating the hot water is extremely efficient to heat 300 plus litres of water. It's, it's amazing to be honest with you. So I'm absolutely chuffed to bits. And also, this is meant to be apparently be really noisy and it's just generally not it's mad one thing i will add is when you're on a hot day and sorry the dogs want attention when you're on a hot day and you're outside building or doing whatever you're doing and you need a drink or whatever because that's blown out freezing cold air because it's like a aircon unit slash fridge it's a fridge in reverse and um, you just come and stand in front of this when it's on and it's it's amazing love it so yeah even the dog likes it just jam in front of it but this is in its temporary location it will be moving i'm gonna to have to move that myself um, and things but just fine because it's where it is at the moment isn't where it's going to basically live forever so we will be moving it but that's again another video another day and look at that for a transition i am inside and that is because i simply forgot to do an outro to the video because steph came home and she shouted for me Anyway, I have been inside building these cabinets, which is gonna be for another video on the channel. So make sure you subscribe and we'll keep you up to date with all that because I made all these myself out of uh, some MDF to hide. That's how the underfloor heating manifold and that is just a cabinet that she wanted to store some stuff in. But another video, we'll talk about that another day. Anyway, back to the solar. Extremely pleased with it so far. We've made it this far into the video. I am happy not happy with the amount of sun that we've been generating this year but that's not the solar panel's fault is it at the end of the day but yeah i think definitely when we get these new panels put in the garden and things to up the the, the amount that we're going to be generating i think that will make so much of a big difference and what is also fantastic news i've just been told um well i didn't be told i just worked out myself um by simply clicking along that i can change onto a different tariff my octopus tariff which allows me to charge my battery three times a day instead of twice a day on a much cheaper rate, which means I might actually generate enough this winter, summer to pay for the winter with it being a bit different yield. But anyway, we'll find out. I'm going to do another video around about the cost element of it all, how much I need to end up, the payback is like and everything like that. But again, I need to do some more number crunching, I think, to, to do that really. Yes, I've got what there was, what I thought was going to happen everything like that. But until we started having a full year, of, of figures from even with the bad sun yield we can't really judge what the payback is going to be like i don't think it's all right having it on a piece of paper before you buy it but until we get some true figures we'll just wait anyway again thanks so much for watching please please subscribe to the channel obviously like smash a like and i'll catch you the next one in a bit peace out